What's up, everyone? Roger and James here from the Disney Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a number of different things. First off, we're going to be talking about all the, some of the stuff that got announced so far from the New York Toy Fair. There's been tons of stuff. I've been busy working away on so many bits and pieces. We've got Lego, Hasbro, we've got Fungo, we've got all kinds of stuff that got announced. We'll also be talking about a brand new mo um, video game for the Nintendo Switch, um, Zoom Zoom Festival. We're going to be talking about at games and Disney um, kind of coming together for um, some projects. And also we're going to be talking about sort of Star Wars and Frozen's special events taking place in October for all the new merchandise. So before we jump into that, let's jump into the Toy Fair because that really was the big thing. Um, one of the busiest weeks, to be honest, on the website. It's one of our kind of main things when all the new toys of the year kind of get revealed. Lots of new stuff for Disney Marvel and Star Wars. So first off, James, what caught your eye from all the stuff that's been announced so far? So this isn't going to come as a surprise, but the Legos. Yeah. Um, the Legos are the ones that are obviously I'm the one most interested in. Uh, but you might be surprised there were a couple other things, and we'll come to those in a minute. Uh, the Legos, particularly uh, the TIE Interceptor, which they labeled a TIE Fighter, but whatever, semantics. Uh, it's the red and black one. Not the yeah. one they actually named a tie, tie interceptor, which is from uh, the Resistance show, and yeah, it is a hodgepodge of uh, put together parts. But that one specifically jumped out at me, and I'm kind of interested in these. I don't know what the branding form is, but the assault sets or the attack sets where they've got little targets yeah. on Legos, and you can yeah, they're 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 on screen yeah. right now. Is you can shoot those little blaster things and i don't know maybe they break or whatever if you hit yeah. the target i i'm not sure uh i'm not going to spend money on them without seeing them what they're supposed to do but yeah. they've kind of got me interested you see i went the exact opposite route on this because i looked at things and i was looking at them first going these are very expensive sets i, I agree with I you would... that they, they are overpriced for what they are i mean 29 bucks each for the small sets and they look like about twelve to fifteen dollar sets. If you took the, you know, it was like it took me a while to realize this action battle thing what it was. And then going, it's literally like two little mini builds and two little mini figures that would normally be around about twelve, thirteen pound, fifteen bucks. And then this one not caught my attention was a sixty dollar set. Okay, it's got five hundred pieces, but uh, I'm wondering like where all the talking about is nearly is only. Um, nearly barely 10 pieces le um, less and it's a ten dollars difference price and i just i was looking at this going this seems very overpriced for what it is i'm also wondering where all the pieces are because it says it's a 500 piece set but i don't i don't see it unless there's a lot of like little one by one pieces you know the little tiny square pieces or whatever it's hard to see where all these pieces are so it it's hard to see value Mm. in those sets however like i said i am kind of intrigued by the concept of it yeah. and I, I could see how kids or uh or whoever would have fun with those you know they, it's something you always kind of want to do with legos is you know the the build yeah. and break part of them but yeah i mean i, I think it, we'll I see think, what happens i think it's a good idea it's a good way of reselling um figures and builds again because they can basically just take any build and just put this little logo on it and kind of redo the minifigures and stuff. So it's a good way of doing that. But price point, I don't know what kid is going to spend six, 60 bucks on that set. Well, let's let's be fair. It's not the kid spending 60 bucks. It's yeah, but this, this is the thing as well. Of like adult collectors aren't go, aren't going to pay for that because it's, it's not the right no. site. But the problem for me at the minute is I haven't seen Star Wars Resistance yet. It's not on Disney Life, so... Um, I haven't got into this series yet. I'm currently going through Rebels. but So those two ships, the TIE Interceptor and the TIE um, Fighter, I don't know who they are, so it's got a lot less well, um, uh, inclination on me. I mean, the thing with the, the one that they label as a TIE Fighter, so the red and black one, uh, even if you don't see Resistance, it's still the TIE Interceptor from... Uh, Return of the Jedi as mm. part of the the Death Star thing. It's just got a, a unique color scheme, so at least it has that going for it. I do actually have the, a little um, X-wing uh, ship in the in the little uh, miniature games that is red, a red tie interceptor, a Ted like that. Anyway, so I've seen that kind of design before, right? And this other one, um, 
they haven't talked about this character much in the show. Yeah. I haven't seen it uh, the last couple episodes, so maybe they have at that yeah. point. But um, this isn't an official Imperial ship. This is a cobbled together uh, thing that this pilot, the one on the right uh, yeah. in the skull helmet, uh, flies in defense of the the station that's the main yeah. area for the for the Resistance TV show. Um, in the parlance of the old Star Wars continuity, we would have called this an ugly, uh, yeah. which is just a mishmash of like several different ships pushed together. Um, but yeah, it, it's I don't know. It's it's hard to see the appeal of this one unless you are a big fan yeah. of the show. And even as a Star Wars fan, I kind of watch the Resistance. I enjoy it, but it's more of a I don't know, not quite an obligation. But if it was branded something else, I probably wouldn't be watching it. The only one that I kind of liked was really the Jewel and Star Killer base. That was a little bit more of a simpler one, and um, similar to what they've done with that recreation of the scene with Luke and Leia. So I, that that's probably the one out of this range. It's a very weak range for me because I'm not really feeling literally one set out of all of them. That's quite a bad ratio for me, um, as for sort of normal kind of thing. Really, um, I kind of expect to like more. That's I think it's those battle attack ones, but it's a good. I, that just looks to me like a way of spreading out um, those old characters, especially as we're going to talk about later. There isn't really any kind of new Star Wars stuff really coming till later this year. This is almost feels like a little bit of a stopgap to fill up, fill them in. Yeah, they they've got to keep the license going, and it's Star Wars, so they'll sell anyway. And they want to have a range of uh, of new sets available by uh, May the fourth. You know, because mm -hmm. that's always a big Star yeah. Wars sale day, and there's always stuff going on. I'll probably keep my eye on that uh, red and black tie interceptor, as well as a couple of other sets that have already come out earlier this year, like the Inferno Squad. Yeah, maybe that snow speeder that we talked about last week was it yeah. uh, when they announced yeah. the twentieth anniversary yeah. stuff. Uh, so some things I'm keeping my eye on, but nothing that I'm kind of like, ooh, I've I've got to get this right now or on the day it comes out. Yeah, the tw I do think the 20th anniversary sets are much better. I like that. Um, so they were on display as well at the Toy Fair. There's some photographs up on the website. Um, there's, uh, um, Travis, who's one of our reporters, is at the event. He's been sending lots of pictures back. Um, so that's been great. I was keeping on the Lego. Um, we got some Toy Story ones as well were announced. They look um, pretty interesting, um, kind of giving us, again, a little bit more inclination of what um, is going to be happening in that uh movie definitely seems to be that the uh sort of fun fair is definitely the the carnival is definitely the theme of this movie looking at all the different toys that got announced so we had the and, carnival, and we, yeah. we got a piece of that from the most recent teaser i think as yeah. well so there's like four different sets we got the carnival mania the rv vacation the carnival thrill coaster and the Woody and RC set. There was also a um, Duplo set as well that was on display, but we haven't got the official images of them yet. Um, very interesting set. Um, I like the Woody and RC set. Ten dollars sold. That's a straight up buy for me. Got Woody and an RC racer. You can't really go wrong for. And at nine ninety nine, you can't go wrong for that one. Um, yeah, the, the pricing on these is much more reasonable. Star Wars always has. Uh, a slightly higher price because yeah. of the brand, but the you know as you said the Woody Racer that's definitely one that I'll keep an eye on. Uh, the other one I'm kind of interested in here, maybe more as a novelty, is uh, the Carnival Thrill Coaster, uh, because Lego's been releasing a number of uh, roller coaster sets mm -hmm. lately. There's the big expensive ones, and this is the first one I think that we've seen that's actually at a decent price. Now, granted, it's literally just a circuit. But yeah. still, I, I, I'm kind of keen on that. Plus, um, you know, it's got Buzz Lightyear. It's got the Alien. Mm. Um, I think I have both of those from the blind bags that they released yeah. like a couple years ago. But still, it, it's an easy way of getting some core characters from the set. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this because I don't, I, you know, so much of this ring is it is literally just a circle. And right. And it kind of loses what that is as a, I think the concept of a thrill coaster like no, <laughs> yeah, there's no should. thrill in there. That's just a Monday. Um, the RV vacation set looks quite nice because you get Rex, um, and you get look as much as it looks like an RV van, it looks more like an ice cream van. Um, I, I think they should have honestly gone with the 
Pizza Planet, but obviously that would make more sense for the first Toy Story rather than Toy and Story the, 4. Carnival Mania kind of almost feels like a little bit of those battle attack sets again because we've got the cannon and the shooting range and we've got the shooting range on um, this other coaster. Um, I'll be honest, not probably top end line for me of what I'm looking at for sets. Um, I'm going to pick up that RC Racer set. The other ones, um, they're just not I, the trouble is, I think, especially if I'm, I like, I don't mind buying the little sets when they've got little bit set builds and little figures. It's fine when they keep them under twenty dollars. Once you get above twenty dollars, I want a vehicle. I want something that's big. I want something that can. I don't like a set full of lots of little things, um, because to me that's not really worth it. If I'm spending forty, fifty bucks plus on a set, I want something to hold in my hand kind of thing, rather than lots of little ones. But that's just my, my personal view. Yeah, so two observations for me. One, um, the RC set, as I said, that'll probably be I'll probably pick that up. Ten dollars for for Woody and RC is easy. Um I'm not gonna get the coaster, but it does intrigue me. And if I were to ever get another coaster set, I think I would pick it up just to have the extra parts to to enhance the other coaster with. And then uh, what was it? The Toy Story or Carnival Arcade, the 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 most expensive yeah. one. It reminds me of um, Buzz Lightyear Star Command at mm. Disney World, and um, the 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 arcade yeah, in so uh, Hollywood Studios or Disneyland. Yeah. Uh, and also, it's got a cannon, which mm. is not something I've seen mm. in a in a Lego set in a very long time. And I have very fond memories growing up of the spring action cannons that used to come on like the pirate sets and you would pull back and they would fire. And then they kind of neutered them because you know, it's danger. You're going to poke mm. someone's eye out or something like that. So I'll be very curious to see if this cannon actually works. Cause it looks like it's supposed to, you know, it, it's supposed to shoot at the, the targets, but you know, they haven't actually had a working cannon in quite some time. So I don't just kind of going off the rails there, but we'll see. I'm not. I'm not going to buy it. It's too expensive for what you get. But yeah, right. So jumping now back to some Toy Story stuff. We have also had some announcements of some of the new Toy Story um, toys. Um, so we got um, lots of Bo Peep stuff. So we got an interactive toy and um, doll, and there's another doll set. Then we have the Lego set that we talked about earlier on, and then there's another Bo. Peep. They are really pushing the Bo Peep uh, merchandise this time. You know, you're really getting a sense that she's a real strong character going into this one and then we have um the two the ducky and bunny set so that one looks they sort of pushing those two characters and forky there's those are uh, key and peels characters right yeah yeah those ones then we got forky there's gonna be a load of figures and stuff i mean he just looks horrendous but kind of some of the point he, on that one he's too. supposed to yeah um to be honest nothing really caught my eye too much um with the stuff that's been revealed so far it's all very kind of generic but it kind of makes sense really with toy story a lot of this stuff is going to be coming out at the end of april a couple of months i think we're going to see a lot of toy stories the other thing with toy story stuff is they can just reuse old ones and you know they can just um with the trouble is that woody and buzz haven't changed it's kind of one of those weird things of you know we sort of talk about this like with marvel and star wars where they will change color you know they, every movie that comes out they're in a different outfit Toy right. Story isn't they they are they are no different in this movie than they are in the first movie so all the merchandise does look very samey because they haven't changed them at all so it kind of the charm of the, the keeping the characters that way but in toiler world that kind of s slows it down a little bit right and you know they they did do a slight adjustment with Toy Story 2 when, you know, Buzz had the fancy utility belt when they were at Al's yeah. Toy Barn. But aside from that, there's really not much you can do to change them. So they, they kind of lock them out themselves in with that. Yeah. Um, and again, the toys they're showing off here, we're not the target audience yeah. for these. You know, Bo Peep is obviously, you know, supposed to be a young girl target audience. Uh, the, the other is, you know, Children, they're they're aimed at you know children. They're gonna you know do their their Toy Story stuff with those. We, you know, the, yeah, the, yeah. I'm not interested in any of these, but that really shouldn't 
come as a surprise. Um, also, so Funko announced tons of stuff um, just ahead of the Toy Fair. They've all been on display. Lots of stuff that kind of caught my eye, um, but there was a lot of just random, random things that got announced. Some of the cool things really definitely feel Fox have been getting in with Funko this year of kind of, and uh, we got a load of new Simpsons ones. We got some Alien ones. There's been a lot of um, that kind of bits and pieces. I think kind of jumping into that. So the Simpsons ones look good. I've already pre-ordered the Bartman uh, pop vinyl. That one definitely just was like I just remember having that as a figure as a kid and just had to have that one. Um, other than that, there were some Marvel ones and some bits and pieces, but nothing really caught my eye. You definitely feel like Marvel and Star Wars at this event so far, bar the Hasbro stuff, have been all held back because of. It, Avengers Endgame and Episode 9, etc. So it's been a little bit light on some of those bits and pieces. We've seen some far from home. None of those figures, really. I've got so many Spider-Man pops. I don't need any more. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's how many... I've, I, can't, I think I've got like half a dozen Spider-Man pops already. So it's like, I don't need any more Spider-Man pops, regardless of the outfit or the costume or the pose. But no, I'm, I'm done on Spider-Man pops. There's only so much you can do with them. Um, yeah, I think that really covered just about everything that I was interested in. The only other thing that I saw that I was like, ooh, I, I could see myself picking that up depending on what the price is, is um, a series of Star Wars bookends, which I think had Porgs on them. And I, I've been trying to find where they were announced or what company made them, but I, I can't find it at the moment. In any event, uh, it, it's by a company that does... Um, statues rather than yeah. figures they have a lot of high-end good quality statues there are a number in there that I, I thought was quite good i'm wondering if that's kota beer is that uh i thought it might be but I, I don't see it on their list which doesn't mean it's not it just means it's not on that particular article um There's but no, either way they, they yeah. do they do high quality stuff and i need some bookends and i do like the porgs they're one of the best things that came out of episode eight so it depends on the price. I don't think a price was announced. I expect they'll be expensive, which means I won't get them. But if they're reasonable, I could see picking them up. Yeah, I mean, it's been one of those things of there's uh, been so much announced, but also they sort of stagger them out. They've been announcing stuff before Toy Fair, but it's trying to get through all, all the information. There's still tons of stuff uh, on my to-do list to kind of get up because, you know, you can only even Travis stuff. He's going from booth to booth. You can only go to see one booth at a time. Hasbro announced a ton of toys. They announced loads of new Star Wars figures. They announced um, all kinds of fun bits and pieces. Um, we got some retro figures. We got um, this massive black series Hyper Eight or Hyper Space Eight Inch figure. We've got loads of Marvel Legends. They were like, um, they've gone a little very bonkers on X Men this year. So it was like the the you know maybe the word of not doing anything X Men has disappeared. So they've really kind of jumped in in there. They've done some great figures featuring like Juggernaut and Colossus and Cyclops and Wolverine. I've seen tons of tons of things. There's so many um, figures. I must and there's all these 80th anniversary sets. Um, when I talk, it's like just go check out the website because I did probably half a dozen stories because there was that many announced. It was just bonkers. The one thing that really caught me eye was these retro Star Wars figures that from the 70s. And, I mean, I know we were talking about it in, in the Discord with Jane, and I had five of those six figures as a kid. So it was quite nostalgic to the fact of going, oh my, they've actually just re-released figures I used to play. Those were the Star Wars figures I used to play with. No wonder I love the Black Series and stuff, because you can see how far they've come in that time. <laughs> They've come a very long way from the old Kenner toys, but uh, I don't I don't have that nostalgia. I didn't really have those toys growing up, but I can definitely see the appeal of them. Um, and I, I, now's a good time to do it. Uh, remind people of why they they enjoyed Star Wars in the first place. You know, kind of wipe away whatever stigma is attached to the brand at the moment due to Episode Eight's kind of. Uh, the response to that and solo not performing as well as they wanted to so on you know good time to to trigger the nostalgia remind people you know yeah, you played I, with these toys growing up man that vader looks janky but i but i did actually i had two of these as well because one of them i'd lost the cape before 
and like I had a, like loads of the Star Troopers or Storm Troopers because obviously that's what he did. Chewbacca, this was one of my favorite toys. I never, I never, I lost a gun years. Before. I don't remember the gun. Um, Princess Leia, I lost the cape for that and the gun years before that one. And then I just look at um, Luke Skywalker, and I think I had him again. Uh, yeah, but the, we, what was quite weird with these ones is the actual lightsaber goes up into the arm when you pull it away. Um, I think I did actually have all of these figures as a kid. So, and Han Solo, I mean, he just looks nothing like him. Um, but that actually is, it's, it is funny because I do have the nostalgia for these because other than Grand Toffin, which they put in with this board game for some bizarre reason. They put yeah, this, well, it's so you'll buy the board game. Yeah, it's just a bit odd. Um, there were some more Star I was surprised they did announce some Star Wars stuff. I'm loving, as per usual, the two action figures, or the action figure I like the most is this Darth Maul um, Black series. Of course, that's a Star Wars Celebration exclusive, isn't it? That's the one that I, I like the most out of all of them. Because um, it looks... Well, you know, so... On episode 1 set, it just looks great. So it was a, I was a little unclear on this one. It seemed like, uh, yes, it's exclusive to... Uh, Star Wars Celebration, but it seemed like it. There might be a regularly available um, variant on it. Like there'll be a specially marked one just for the uh, the mm. yeah, just for the event kind of thing. Yeah, for the event, and and then there will be a one that's regularly introduced. Uh, I, that there. might just be my impression. I'm not sure where I'm yeah. pulling that from, but that's that was my impression on how it went i've also definitely gonna to have to pick up that battle droid one as well that one's definitely on my ones to pick up because yeah i love the battle droids i always did the rest of the figures um makes windu might pick up that one there though i um that one's kind of quite fun and some of the other ones but there were so many so many bits and pieces announced at, at the event um there's just just so many toys um and marvel really did they just completely just just really just showed off so many of them it was quite quite impressive really of how done but yeah so that kind of um gives an idea of roughly some of the bits and pieces from toy fair there was other companies announcing bits and pieces um but i always think of kind of like funko hasbro lego as what i would call your mainstream toys that you'll find at your local toy store all the things like sideshow and coach and hot toys all those kind of things you don't find them at your local toy store. You don't find them at your grocery. You know, you don't find them at, at your WalMarts, etc. Um, so that's kind of the thing. I know when I was walking around the toy, my to local toy shop the other day, I was looking at all the Lego sets, going, Ooh, "Yeah, yes, yes." It's my local toy store is a local independent one, and nothing. And when things get reduced, it's like six months later, and you know, by that point, everybody else online is at half the price. So. It's one of those things of going, yeah. I know at least on the Lego, I know I don't get hit with any. It's the same retro price, but, but the Black Series figures are normally about four, two, three bucks more than online, including shipping. So it's like five quid more. So it's like, yeah, um, I don't tend to like like picking them up in there for that price. But um, lots of bits and pieces there. I think there's some other. We'll obviously f have lots more stories going up over the week as we find stuff because there was just a bar the the press release. Uh, toy fair thing it was just 50 deep it's i even I'm, i was just sitting there the other day going man these co toy companies really need to start kind of spreading out their news of trying to get it out a little bit earlier because it, i was getting lost in the amount of, of it's like if, if you're a consumer you're gonna get completely just miss what's going on it's like when you say like e3 it's like well if e3 was like the and for video games Toy Fair is that for toys, and it was just so much stuff being announced one after another. And that's yet another reason why I would expect both Marvel and Star Wars are holding back mm -hmm. uh, their their major items. Uh, you know, they can use the excuse Captain Marvel End Game Episode Nine, but yeah, separating them out. You know, if you announce here, like I don't know, a twelve inch Captain Marvel figure, like super uh, high detail uh lots of points of articulation or whatever it'll just be a news item now if you announce that closer to the movie coming out on its own you might get some traction on it so i i don't know if that, <laughs> that's probably not something that they're developing but 
you know, just as yeah. an example. You will find some uh, Captain Marvel toy reviews up on the YouTube channel. Um, maybe at least in the next week, there's some Marvel Legends and also some of the dolls. Um, Hasbro sent some to me to review. So you're going to see lots of um, Captain Marvel toys popping up on the YouTube channel as well. So flipping gears now into on to the subject of them holding stuff back. Um, Disney announced uh, two big things really in regards to toys. Um, Triple Force Friday and Frozen Fan Fest, which are coming. I've, I think it was um, the date was October the 4th. Um, which is about seven weeks before Frozen comes out, but a li little bit more on Star Wars, but we'll do the Star Wars bit in a minute. So Frozen Fan Fest, they are taking a leaf straight out of the Star Wars line and wanting to do a big day to release all the inf information on new toys and get loads of new merchandise in the stores for that day. So on that day, you'll be able to go into the store and get this. This is a... The fact they're doing this on the same day as Star Wars just seems like a recipe for disaster, but maybe um, toy shops will be able to survive things. But if some of this stuff doesn't leak out in supermarkets, we'll be very, very surprised. Um, so we're going to get toys, apparel, fashion, homeware, books, much more. Lots of, And usually at this point as well, we start seeing some of the characters that maybe weren't in the trailer which we're going to be talking about on the What's on Disney Plus podcast this week. Um, yeah, so we've got the Frozen one, which, which I wasn't expecting. You know, f the Force Friday thing we've been doing for years, but I didn't expect the Frozen Friday. Yeah, and I probably wouldn't expect it um, to continue. But, you know, for, for Frozen, I can see why they'd want to do it. Uh, you know, it is their biggest franchise within the Disney sphere at the moment. And... This is the year it comes out. So they're going to want to make as big a deal out of it as possible. You know, I, just as an example, I'm sure that Anna and Elsa are going to be like massive Halloween costumes this year. So they're going to want to have stuff for that. They're going to want to have all the toys that the little kids can play with. And they might even show off one of the songs, which will get drilled into every parent's head uh, yeah. over the next year. Well, of course, remember with the first movie, they didn't hit enough merchandise in stores. They they always go a bit soft on new franchises, and they got completely uh, they totally misread what was going on and didn't have enough merchandise for that Christmas when Frozen came out. They ain't gonna have that problem this year. You're gonna be able to swim through Frozen merchandise in the stores because they're gonna have it on everything. Um, you know, literally, it's gonna be on. They aren't gonna get caught out this time. They have been probably started production back in two years ago. Get the trucks ready. <laughs> I would expect that um, they're going to have a bigger problem with a lot of stuff ending up on clips after a couple of months because they're going to have too much stuff. But obviously, they, they're going to go on the assumption that even if if uh, half the items end up on clearance at Target or then rebranded Toys R Us or whatever, they'll still make more than enough money off of sales of Frozen. You are not going to be able to go anywhere without running into Anna and Elsa and whoever the new girl is and and all that so yeah so now let's look over to star wars side so they announced the triple force friday which kind of caught it was a bit like it was so good they star wars tweeted it out and then their entire website was just four or four errors for hours until it kind of went up so it was kind of quite fun to kind of find what the information was now the reason it's triple force friday again taking place october the 4th is because they have got three different things they're trying to sell us. We've got Star Wars Episode Nine hits the cinemas in December, so this is going to be our first, probably the reveals of the Episode Nine content. There's probably going to be some Episode Nine toys out as well. Star Wars Mandalorian, um, it's going to be coming to Disney Plus, so they've got. I suspect that will be when the merchandise hits stores for that for that because that will be that seems to make a lot more sense. Put the toys out for that. And announce a load of stuff from episode nine and then there's also got the star wars jedi fallen order video game um now i'm wondering if that's actually going to be the release date of that game or if it's just it's like one thing doing tie-in movies or tie-in merchandise for games but that's not a, that would to me doesn't maybe hit that triple force i'm wondering if that is the star wars fallen order release date uh, release date might be a stretch, but it'd be nice. I'd be fine with that. 
Well, normally, normally EA do it in November, but they've been finding real struggle with getting these shooting shooters out in November. Look at um, Battlefield and Titanfall all suffered being out in November against Call of Duty. It might make, and even Battlefront Two and Battlefront One, they've always gone for this November shooting thing. So maybe if they can get it out before Call of Duty, they might stand a better shot of doing it. Literally, possibly. Uh, <laughs> see what you did there. Uh, possibly, but um, I think it also will depend a bit on them not having a giant uh, loot box fiasco. Uh, and then also... More you know, of a single player. I think well, hopefully we'll see some more of this game. At, that hasn't it, stopped them with the loot boxes before. Yeah. Um, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they do pull it here because pull it forward, get out the way of Call of Duty, get out the way of whatever's coming this fall because we don't really know much about the upcoming release schedule yet. But if they've put that date in now... October the 4th, and go, look, October 4th is um, Star Wars Day. They are going to get a lot of publicity. It's a good data. Um, and if, if they've just pulled it forward by four four weeks, it might be better. I think it's better than a November release date. It'll give them more chance of getting those Star Wars sales before Christmas, especially since it is supposed to be more of a single-player shooter. So um, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the date. Because I can't really see why I would mention it. If the, you know, a couple of toys for a video game aren't really going to push, aren't going to move the needle. It's the game that's going to move it for that triple, triple threat. Right. And, and I guess we'll just have to see. Because um, well, we don't know jack about this game at this point. So, uh, except that it's coming this year. Now, obviously, I'd prefer it sooner rather than later. Just even from uh, the perspective of a gamer the November, October, December months are just crammed with games. Even if you don't like Call of Duty, even if you're not into that, there are other franchises coming out at that point. 2019 is looking to be a very uh, heavy year for games. We've already got, we're only in February, and we've already, this past week, had a ton of uh, launches. Mm. Uh, Anthem was in soft launch. Uh, you know, uh, Metro Exodus came out. Crackdown 3 came out. Okay, so maybe that's not a major launch, but, you know, Microsoft wants it to be a major launch. Uh, the Division 2 is coming up in a couple of weeks. All all these things are, are popping in, and, and that'll only be by the end of March. When we get to December, these games, you know, it's going to have to be a really good game to get people's attention. So, yeah, the earlier they can get it out, the better. Uh, but so long as it doesn't compromise the quality of the game. Yeah, I mean, if officially on the website, it does say the latest title from EA and Respawn, Star Wars Jedi, or a brand new adventure game coming out holiday 2019, which maybe we won't be that pushing it back to our Thanksgiving um, things. It's a shame. I think they should go early. Um, I think they need to get out away from Co um, Call of Duty for shooting. It's just... You know, you're going up against the. It is always the big shooter. It just it's destroyed EA for at least three video game shooting games. It's just you're going two weeks, a couple of weeks after call. This one has a different appeal. I'm hoping this game looks great, but yeah, Triple Force Friday sounds great. So again, changing gears, we're going to go over to um, Nintendo. So during the Nintendo Direct, which took place earlier this week, Nintendo announced tons of new video games that are going to be coming in the months ahead. And during that event, I mean, I tune in every time there's a Nintendo Direct because I want to see what Nintendo games. First off, we saw a new trailer for Marvel um, Ultimate Alliance 3. We got to see that it's going to have like four-player co-op and... I've got to see a bit more trailer, so that's always good to see. That's exclusive Nintendo Switch coming out this summer. They did say that that's now a summer game. And then there's a big surprise was Zoom Zoom Festival was announced, which is a, it's got the full version of the mobile game in there. It's also got like little mini games that you play. And it's, it completely caught me off guard. I love the fact that you're going to be able to buy a Zoom Zoom game without microtransactions on the Nintendo Switch. You're going to be able to play the original game. You're going to be able to play all these weird things. It definitely feels like like Nintendo and Disney have spoken about the fact of this thing is very popular. We need some games for it. We know you're not making um, AAA games, so can we have some A games and AA games? And Nintendo Switch is kind of becoming, you know, we got two games coming to this console that are exclusive that we're just not seeing anywhere else. Did they say that the Zoom Zoom game is exclusive? Yeah, I guess they did. Yeah. Um, Either way, yeah, it depends on the price point for it. 
Uh, but honestly, if it's not too expensive, I wouldn't mind having the full version of the the Zoom Zoom game. Just the the mobile game without the microtransactions, without having to have a line account to uh, to save mm-hmm. your progress. That's what killed it for me. Is because I didn't have line and uh, I had to change phones and I lost all my progress. And it was actually a very fun game. Uh, if they really wanted to to kind of impress us, they'd include the Marvel Zoom Zoom as well. Yeah, that, um, and then yeah. it's got the mini games too. I I'm not expecting much from them. You know, mini game compilations traditionally are are not particularly good unless it's say Mario Party. But I, I was impressed to see a curling mini game yes. in there. That was one of the ones in the video, and I was just like, "All right, if this is not terrible, I could at least have fun with curling." The other interesting thing with this one is uh, it looks like there's going to be a physical release. I thought it was going to be an eShop only, but one of the, the stores I buy games from has got it up for pre-order. I mean, it's still a full price game. Um, I still, I'm still sitting there going, yeah, I think if you're going to try and get 40 quid for this, you're kind of pushing the boat. Um, but I mean, you pay that much for, you know, Boyo Boyo or te- Tetris, but then, you know, they gave away Tetris for free this week. So um, it does seem a little bit pricey and especially for a, a version of a mobile game that people have had for years. It, I, can't help but feel like this should be a bit of a lower title price. Yeah, the, it definitely should not be a full, unless it turns out that the mini games are just like amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, for some reason, I don't see that happening. No. Uh, yeah, this is one of those things. I suspect, you know, they'll try to get there that first week sales, sixty dollars or or forty pounds, whatever, for the that first week, and then very rapidly, this is going to end up going. Uh, on sale and and down, so yeah, yeah, it is it is a funny um, a funny old thing with this one. Um, it's good. I'm glad they're doing it. It's good to see Disney getting some titles out, doing something a bit different. This film is very much along the lines of let's just turn something that we've already got and get it out there. Yeah, and you know it, it doesn't hurt them to put this out. And like I said, for a decent price. I would consider getting it just to have the full uh, mobile game without the microtransactions, preferably with having all the characters unlocked up front, not leveled up, just unlocked. Uh, and I'd be I'd be fine with that. And it would be great if it if it got updates from the mobile game at least until that game uh, collapses, or if it had that uh, the the Sumsum International or whatever it was the you know the that game I, they didn't announce it i assume it's not included it would be great if it was no so good to see it just a, a new game coming to the switch something disney we've not really got a lot going on at the minute now after we've just had uh, kingdom hearts free released which by the way just still playing it been playing it every night up to the pirates of the caribbean world now i am um slowly working through it um it's it's i'm about 17 18 19 hours into the game so enjoying it but um, yeah, it's taking its time to go through that one. Yeah, and I've put about the same amount of time into it, but I'm not nearly as far as you are because I also spent time uh, in the gummy ship and I went back and, and went for treasure chests and hidden Mickeys and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, I, but... I, if someone says, oh, there's an emblem, I will look. Um, other than that, I'm not really, and not really. Right. Um, and I'll be honest, there's been a few occasions where it's like, especially. A few other things like more enemies pop up, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to run past you because I've actually, uh, I'm, uh, I've, he's like, I've just beaten fifty of you. I've just taken two steps forward, and now another fifty of you have appeared. Like, um, yeah, let's carry on. But nevertheless, so we go, once we, once we both completed the game, we'll do our full reviews of the games in full spoiler mode. So kicking on to what is the last um, topic for the day, which is at games. They announced um, that they. These are a company that make like little retro devices. You might have seen them in the store. They do like Sega ones, they do Pac-Man ones, Street Fighter game. And they put classic games from like, like Atari, um, Sega games, etc. They put them all onto these little devices. They've been selling big arcade cabinets. I'll be honest, I've heard very mixed reviews on some of them. Some of them are good, some of them are not. They've also released like collections of Atari games on like the PlayStation 4. So they announced, um, kind of interestingly enough, that they are signed a deal with Disney and Marvel, or sorry, Disney and uh, for 
Star Wars and Disney titles. So films for things from Lucasfilm. So then they say Lucasfilm, we could end up with things like Treasure Island and Tron, etc. So they said that they're going to be bringing in titles from Donald Duck, Tron, The Jungle Book, Lion King, and Wreck It Ralph. Um, they're going to be in their full size arcade arcade cabinets, their Blast family plug and play micro con um, consoles, retro consoles, and portables. Um, They'll be announcing more details soon. They've got a number of different items in the past that they've done this for. Um, they've, you know, they're very much into using uh, old content to kind of sell these units, and they do work quite well. And they do, you know, you, I saw them in in my local game store when I was there the other day. They had um, the Sega ones on the background, but personally, I was a bit like just get this stuff out on the nintendo and the, and the playstation and the xbox get the get the emulation right do it properly you know and this could be great for for them you can put together a collection put them out on these bundles it just seems to me like well, they've ran out of sega games and the sega games aren't hitting any note anymore because sonic's been on everything including the toaster so let's go and raid the Disney archive because a lot of people recognize those Lucasfilm and Disney movie games from the past. The fact that Wreck It Ralph got brought in doesn't surprise me because if you've ever been to the Disney Quest event, a uh, place that used to be in Walt Disney World, they used to have a string of Wreck It, a uh, Fix It, Fix It Junior um, arcade cabinets that used to be set up exactly like an old arcade cabinet from the 80s. So they did make a classic. 80s game so it kind of makes it look like it's a new game but no it was basically uh, not much more than an, an old NES game that they built yeah I, I never played that one um, but I, I was aware of its existence there are a couple of old games that I wouldn't mind uh, taking a shot at again um, the old X-Wing cabinet from way back in the day with the ray tracing uh, that was a really fun game especially if you can get the controller Obviously, that's not planned for this, so I'm kind of less enthused. Uh, some of the old Nintendo games, uh, the the Disney line, not necessarily for me, but those old Lucas uh, Arts games like Day of the Tentacle and uh, Full Throttle, and those games are extremely popular even today. So there's a market here, but I have to agree, I don't want a little retro console. I would much rather have these on the Nintendo Switch, uh, ideally, or uh, the Xbox and, and PlayStation. It's just easier. Yeah, I mean, the, thing, the whole thing of these little mini consoles, they're great little gifts. And I suppose they'll sell well for Christmas for people just to buy them. I probably will pick one up to see what it's like. But the, my problem is, like you said, like, they're the tentacle and full throttle. You know, they've released remastered versions of them on the PlayStation 4 and the Vita and stuff in the past. So they've all looked nice and shiny, playing Day of the Tentacle, in the new version and then you could flick a button and it could go back to the old version playing things like chippendale rescue rangers and things like that noticeably they didn't include anything about the concept of capcom games in that list i mean they're basically talking you know it's like things like the jungle book lying those were the the gog games that got released a few years ago they re-released like aladdin and jungle book and the lion king though that old game you know there was a load of old titles from them like with donald duck and tron so yeah this could be a great way of doing it i am interested to see what they're doing but at the same time i'm a little bit like you could do this better you could just like release these and also as well having played through the afternoon collection i like the replay mode and then you got that on this on the on the nintendo versions and stuff i think the trouble is retro collections have moved on and they've made them better and now just to just chuck um, a little portable US, a little device in, um, it'll be fun for a bit, but these games are notoriously hard, and without all those like save states and rewind modes that we're used to now, I'm not sure how, it's good for nostalgia, but it'll be interesting where they go with that one. Yeah, and you know, there's also the fact that unless it's a, an NES classic or a Super NES classic, these systems don't do well. I mean, I think the, the PlayStation Classic, which would be the only other one I could think of that would have a decent shot at this, is just taking up retailer space right now. I, I don't think that sold well at all. It got very poor reviews. And then the ones made by this company in particular, like the Sega Genesis and the Atari 2600, you see them at, at 
uh, discount outlets all the time here in the States. They don't get good reviews. I think even though the hardware or the, the, the hardware that should run this is 20 years old at this point, they don't do a good job of it. So there's not really a good legacy right. building here. And I, well, I'll just reiterate, I would much rather see these on the virtual console or uh, Xbox or PlayStation. It, I don't want to plug in another system, particularly one that I don't have an incredible amount of faith in. I'd rather just use the consoles I already have. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting what goes on with that one. It might just be now that these games get bundled in with their machines going forward. And I don't know. It's just going to be fun to see what they what they come out with. But some of it could be kind of a nice little fun retro look back. And then you remember just maybe how bad some of those ones were. But nevertheless, thank you very much for joining us this week. Make sure you subscribe on the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe on the audio podcast versions if you are there. Um, and make sure you go check us out over at thiskingdom.com and follow us on all the different social medias, etc. Keep up with all the news. James, where can they find you? You can find me heroiclegacy.com. And on that, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon. Laters. Later.